we have been talking together as a community, as a church, we've been talking about the power and the person of the Holy Spirit. And I want to just kind of stay in that theme today. I want to talk to you about the activity of the Holy Spirit. Now, if you didn't know this, I want to bring good news to you today. The Holy Spirit is the beautiful third person of the Trinity. So we believe in God the Father, we believe in God the Son, and we believe in God the Holy Spirit. So God the Father, that is our, that is our Father in heaven. The Father sent his one and his only Son. In Spanish, his name is Jesus. <laughs> and so, um, and so, and the, and the Holy Spirit in the Pentecostal church, we call him the Holy Ghost, okay? So God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, we're going to talk about it in just a moment, but the Holy Spirit, he resides on the inside of you. And he is, some have called him, his name is the divine encourager. So think about your most encouraging friend. Think about the person in your life that encourages you the most and know that you have someone even more encouraging living on the inside. So he does not riddle you with shame or guilt or condemnation. The Holy Spirit encourages you. What does he encourage you with? Reminders of what God has spoken. He comforts you. He convicts you. He is the great, he is the divine encourager. Why? Because we need to be encouraged. Sometimes you watch the media, you watch culture, you look at your own life, and you know you need someone to encourage you. God knew how much encouragement you needed, so he installed, he hardwired a spirit to live inside of you to encourage you. That is the role of the Holy Spirit. And I just want to let you know today that God has made you so powerful. Maybe you didn't realize this. You are powerful. God has made you so powerful that you can either restrict or release the Holy Spirit in your life. I think some of us don't realize how powerful we are. Like God is so powerful that he put inside of your mouth the power of life and death is in the tongue. So whether you believe in Jesus or not, when you speak, you can speak death or you can speak life. See, I know that. That's why I speak life over the Lakers. They might be living in death, but I prophesy they're going to live in life. Somebody give me an amen. I speak death over the other team that resides in our city. Somebody say amen. amen. But you're powerful. You're powerful. You are powerful. And you can restrict or you can release the divine encourager in your life. So in your home and over your children and in your workspace, the Holy Spirit can be released or he can be restricted according to your faith, according to your obedience, according to your activity. So this is the power that God gives us. And I just want to, I want to teach you this today because I think God wants to do more than he currently is doing. I think God wants to be released a little bit more. He wants to do more things in you and through you. And by the way, when God gets restricted, I don't think you did it on purpose. I don't think it was like intentionally you were trying to limit the Holy Spirit. I think it happened accidentally. In fact, I want to teach a message right down the title of today's message. It's called, Did You Block Him? Anybody that just reacted felt that because they've blocked people before on social media. They just told us a lot about their lifestyle. Did you block him? Because we live in a culture that is quick to the block. It's like we don't just delete comments no more. If you put a bad comment, we're blocking you. Ex-boyfriends, ex-girlfriends, they're getting blocked. Oh, block them. 
We don't just mute posts, mute stories. We block people in our culture. We're blockers. Have you ever had somebody ask you, you know, like sheepishly come up to you and, and, and they, have, they have mustered up enough courage to ask you in a sheepish, kind way, um, how, how, come, how come you unfollowed me? Has this happened to you? This has happened to me a few times. People being like, how, how, come, how come you unfollowed me? If someone ever asks you this, number one, we must give credit to the gall and the backbone that it has taken to muster up this crazy courage. Emphasis on crazy. And, 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 and I remember the first time someone asked me, how come you unfollowed me? It was, it was, it was accidental. It was not on purpose. It was, it was, it was, as God is my witness, I did not do it on purpose. So, you say, so thank God I could tell him, oh, Jesus. I would never unfollow you. I would, I would mute you, but I would never unfollow you. I did not. Let me, let me pull out my phone right now. See, I, I think for you, I don't think that you unfollowed God. I think you block God. I, don't, I think you're still claiming to be a follower, but I think you've restricted the activity. I think if we're honest today, God is blocked in your world. In fact, you give God about 60 minutes a Sunday to talk to your life. But come Monday through Saturday, he's blocked. He's muted. He can't move. He can't speak. He can't change. He can't heal. He can't revive. See, you've restricted God. And God today, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he wants to get released to become the divine encourager that he has always meant to be in your life. I don't think you unfollowed. I think you just kind of accidentally blocked God. And the Bible uses a term here. We're going to look at two things. The Bible teaches us do not grieve the Holy Spirit and do not quench the Holy Spirit. And I want to teach you the differences of those two things. And by the end of this service, my goal is that both of us together, we say we're not going to grieve or quench the activity of the Holy Spirit. Watch what it says here in Ephesians chapter 4. Paul the Apostle, he is writing to a church in Ephesus. He has taught this church about how to see grace. He has taught this church about spiritual warfare. He has taught this amazing church about generosity. They call this church the glorious church. This church in Ephesus is like our church Zoe this is an amazing church but he's warning them he's teaching them hey you have the ability to let the Holy Ghost flow in the church or be restricted in the church I don't know about you but I want as Zoe I want the Holy Spirit to have his way I don't want man's agenda in our church I want God's agenda in our church he's teaching Zoe he's teaching Ephesus this is how church and life is built it's not by power. It's not by might. It's by my spirit, says the Lord. Watch what he says here, Ephesians 4, 29. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths. Some of y'all need some soap in your mouth. But only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And do not... Grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let me pause there real fast. Sealed, what does that mean? You were sealed by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit seals you for the day of redemption, for when you go to heaven. Sealed, why are you sealed by the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit seals you so that you're not saved one day and unsaved the next. You're sealed in by the Holy Ghost. You're like ziplocked in. You're not going, no. some of you, you might have gone to Vegas, but that doesn't mean you're unsaved. You're, you're sealed. This last week on the night that we get in costumes and get free candy, we went, Julia made chili. And when my wife makes chili at our house, she makes two kinds. She's not limited to one. She makes two. She makes a chicken uh, uh, chili, and then she makes one with the meat. And so the next day, she was like, do you want me to bring the chili to the office so we can enjoy the goodness of the chili? I said, absolutely. Bring the sour cream and the jalapeno. So we, we put it in the car. When she put it in the car, she has this Tupperware that seals. And so that, so that way, when I'm driving and I make a turn, it doesn't spill. Nobody wants chili all over their back seat. You've been sealed in. Doesn't matter where you go or what you watch or what you do, the Holy Spirit seals you for the day of redemption. 
Once you say yes, you can't be unsaved. You can get lost. You can get twisted. You can get addicted, but you cannot get unsealed. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling, and slander, along with every form of malice. Now watch, that's what he said to the church in Ephesus. Watch what he says to Thessalonica, 1 Thessalonians 5.19. And do not quench the spirit. Do not quench. So he said to one church, do not grieve. And to another, do not quench. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit. And do not quench the Holy Spirit. The first thing that I need you to understand, write down number one, the Holy Spirit is a person. He is a person with a personality. He is not an it. He is not a thing. He is not spooky. He's not from Stranger Things season one, two, three, or four. He is from God. And he is a person. The person of the Spirit of Jesus lives on the inside. Watch what Jesus says when he told his disciples the Holy Spirit would come. John 16, verse 7 and 8. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And when he has come... He will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. So I need you to understand, the Holy Spirit is a person with a personality. We live in this era that loves the personalities, the strength finders, or, or the Enneagram. I don't know if you heard of the Enneagram. It is in this era the Christian horoscope. And people are like, what's your Enneagram? And everybody wants to know, that. are you a three, are you a seven, are you an eight, are you a four, are you such a five? Everybody wants to know their number. The Holy Spirit, what is the personality of the Holy Spirit is the personality of Jesus because he is the spirit of Jesus. So his personality is what? It's a kind personality. It's a humble personality. It's a serving personality. It's a miracle person. He has the personality of God. So we don't treat it like a thing or an it or something weird. He's a person that lives inside of us. By the way, I need you to understand that today the person of Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father. The, he was a human. He came in human form and he went back to heaven and now you need to see Jesus as the person at the right hand of the Father. He is praying for you right now. The person, the human Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father praying for you. And the Spirit of Jesus lives inside of you. The Bible teaches us that the Spirit no longer lives in tents or in churches or in buildings. He doesn't live in the Highland Park building we bought or in the Miguel Contreras. He's not limited to a YouTube channel. The Holy Spirit lives inside of you. He takes residence in you. This is his address, you. This last week, somebody asked me for my address, and I have to make the decision, do, which DoorDash address do I give them, my office or my home? If you're wondering where the Holy Spirit takes residence, he lit, the person of the Holy Spirit lives inside of you. And because he lives inside of us, we, we with all of our heart, we do not want to grieve him or quench him. Now, grieving the Holy Spirit has to do with, write down number two, grieving has to do with your character. Grieving is character. Now, now we're talking about your character. Now we're talking about your inner world. Now we're talking about what people cannot see. People see cars and, and money and people see fashion and smiles, but only the Holy Spirit sees your inner world. Only the, only, only the Holy Spirit knows who you really are. And so remember, everything about God is inside out. Religion is all outside in. Religion says play the part, dress the part, talk the part, act the part, but you don't have to be the part. Relationship with grace or relationship with the Holy Spirit says, I don't care about fashion, I care about your heart. Remember, man looks at the outward appearance, but the Holy Spirit looks at the heart. So if you ever want to please God, it's not by how much money you give, it's how much residence you allow him to have in your life. You cannot fool the Holy Spirit. So, you, so, so the Holy Spirit, the Bible says, do not grieve him. Now I just want you to understand what grieving, what would grieving look like? Just watch on the screen. Grieving is make him sad, cause grief, offend, 
cause distress, uneasy, sorrowful. Do you realize that there are things, there are attitudes in your life, there are things that you do that could potentially make the Holy Spirit sad, that could make the Holy Spirit be provoked to, to conflict, to, to, to sorrow, to be like, ah. And if you don't think God has emotions, you need to look at the Old Testament and the New. In the Old Testament, God has such emotion that he's like, you know what, Noah, make, build an ark. I'm done with these guys. Get them out of here. I'm just out. In the New Testament, Jesus walks into a church, starts flipping tables because he's angry. He's in the Garden of Gethsemane. He's in so much sorrow, he's, his, his sweat turns to blood. So emotions are in you because emotions are in God. And the Holy Spirit has, you can make the Holy Spirit excited and happy and proud, or you have the potential to make the Holy Spirit sorrowful, cause to grief, cause to, to, to sadness. And I don't know about you, but I want God to be happy and proud. I do not want him to be grieved grieving over the decisions I'm making. So you're like, well, what, what could I potentially be doing that would ever cause him grief? Well, Paul lays it out here in the verses prior. Watch what he says in verse 25. He says, lying grieves the Holy Spirit. Verse 26, let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Verse 27, neither give place to the devil. Verse 28, steal no more. Verse 29, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Verse 31, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. The Holy Spirit is teaching us, this is what I don't want you to be involved in. And notice it's all hard stuff. The Holy Spirit's like, no, no, no. I want to wash your heart. I want to cleanse your heart. I don't want your heart being filled with anger and malice and bitterness and offense. I don't want you to let your sun go down. Have, let me just ask you, have you ever gone to bed angry? The other night I went to bed, 30 seconds left in the Laker game. I knew they were going to lose. I'm watching on my phone on the couch. Julia's on her laptop. 30 seconds left. I go, I'm done. I'm out of here. Go to bed. Good night. I love you. I'm out. Go to my bed, plug in my phone. Blah. Wake up the next morning. I'm doing a November challenge, 6 a.m. 6 a.m. I wake up. I'm walking to the room to see, uh, to my kitchen to see the final score. They won. I go, they won? <laughs> what? They won? I went to bed angry. The Bible is literally saying, not, and I'm using a facetious story, but don't go to bed angry with each other. If you have offense, if you have an issue, if you've got a problem, don't lie, don't steal, don't live a life like that. No, the Holy Spirit wants to talk to you about your character. It's not exterior stuff that makes him proud, it's interior stuff. The relationship with the Holy Spirit is living inside out. I don't want to hold an offense. I don't want to steal. I don't want to lie. I don't want to live in greed. I want you to be pleased with my heart. I don't want to bring you grievance. I want to bring you proudness. Oh, look at this psalm. I love this psalm. Psalm uh, uh, 95, verse 10. For 40 years, I was grieved with that generation. And I said, it is a people who go astray in their hearts, and they do not know my ways. The more you understand his ways, the closer your heart is. This is not the way of God. I'm not going to be a liar. I'm not going to be a stealer. I'm not going to gossip. I'm not going to backbite. I'm not going to be bitter. I'm not going to have unforgiveness. I'm not going to speak with malice intent. I'm not not going to bed with, with, with wrath in my heart. No, because I know the ways of God. The more you know the ways of God, the more you'll walk in the ways. Do not grieve. Thank you. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit. So I love that the, the, the way that you please God has nothing to do with the outer scoreboard. It has everything to do with the inner scoreboard. You can fool man, but you cannot fool God. The things that God gets excited about, your life is inside stuff. I love that purity. I love that motive. I love that intention. I love that forgiveness. I love that attitude. I love that obedience. I love that faith. I love that servitude. What pleases God is an inside world, not an outside world. Don't you live by man's approval. You live to please the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit says, that's what I'm talking about. And the Holy Spirit, when you do this, he's released to lead you. But when the Holy, you ever notice when the Holy Spirit's like, hey, I, I, I want you to forgive him. And, and, and I'm like, you know, I, I think I'd, I'd, I'd rather not. 
and the Holy Spirit's like, um, hey, um, get your behind out of bed and go apologize to your wife. And I'm like, uh, you know, I'd, I'd rather not. <laughs> it's a spirit inside of you, huh, that keeps messing with you. You ever notice that the Holy Spirit, right when you're about to sin, the Holy Spirit's like, ah, oh. <laughs> you're better than that. No, 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 no. You ever be in the middle of gossip and you're gossiping and the Holy Spirit's like, what are you doing? <laughs> you ever notice? Holy Spirit just does a little jingle. We've already talked about this. <laughs> it's a spirit, isn't it? And it's, and it's not, it's not the, you notice the Holy Spirit's never like, you're an idiot. He's always like, you can do better. You know what's on your life. You know what's godly. You ever notice when you, when, you, when you want to even indulge in sin, there's something in you that doesn't just resonate. It's like, I just don't feel right. Some of you need to stop trying to find black and white scriptures about why you have such a conviction about certain things. You need to trust the Holy Spirit. That the Holy Spirit's going, we're not, your body's mine. I live inside of you, so you're not sleeping around like that. Your eyes are mine. You're not looking at them. Your mouth is my mouth. So when you speak, I want you to speak on behalf of me. You're an ambassador. It's the Holy Spirit. You know, we, we love in culture, like, level up It's not like a song. I'm going to level up. Culture's like. Talking about a car or an outfit or a watch. You want to level up? Start obeying the Holy Spirit. That's how you level up. That's how you get out of the ashes and into the rock. Standing on. That's why the Bible says in Proverbs that those who walk with integrity walk securely. And the Holy Spirit's trying to get you to walk securely. The other day we had to pull somebody in the office and we called them in the office and on their walk from the time the person said, can you come meet with Pastor Chad and Julia to when they're walking in the office, they went through the, everything they've done the last three months. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Oh my She's like, by the time I sat down, I was like, I think I'm good. I'm like, good job. <laughs> but the Holy Spirit is trying to get you to live conscience free. You're not, your, your conscience is not messing with you. It's pure. It's character. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit. I'll never forget when I was growing up, my dad, you know, I grew up in a, in a, in a letter-writing culture, a letter-writing generation before text. And I'll never forget when I was in middle school, I was writing a love letter to a girlfriend. Julie's not in the service. I can tell the story. So I'm writing this letter, and my dad finds my love letter. It's like on a weekend. My dad finds my, this, this is embarrassing stuff. So my dad reads my love letter. I mean, is this just the worst? So my dad's like, really, man? He sits me down, really? And I'll never forget, the thing he was really upset about was like, my aunt from Mexico was visiting my, my don't laugh at me, you guys. This is really, this is my aunt. My, my tia from Mexico was visiting. Her name is Sarah Bella. I get it. Sarabella. And so um, my tia Sarabella was in town. And I'm, I'm like in middle school, so it's like I'm working out all the attitude and the rebellion and the punkness. And so I'm telling this girl that I'm trying to impress, like, and I, and, I, and I said some dumb stuff, like, you know, my aunt is in town, and it's so dumb. We have to host her. Just classic middle school attitude. This is so stupid. I'm just, like, writing this stuff. And my dad finds this letter. He sits me down. He's like, this is how you feel about your aunt? I was like, no, I'm sorry. I love her. Sarabaya, I love you. You know, it's like dumb. But it's like sometimes you, you need the Holy Spirit to be like, really? You text that? You said that? You sat around the table? You did what with your money? You don't even have that money. Why are you spending money you don't have? You're not tithing? Like, What? Sometimes you need the Holy Spirit to say it grieves me that you talk like that. It grieves me that you got that rebellion still. It grieves me that you're acting like a 13-year-old. It grieves me that you don't want to serve. It grieves me that you don't love me with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. I don't want to grieve the Holy Spirit. 
The first one is character. The second one is power. Do not quench the Holy Spirit. Another way you could say that is don't stifle the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit have his way. Let the Holy Spirit have room. Let the Holy Spirit do what the Holy Spirit wants to do. The first one is for you, and the second one is for others. The first one's all about your inner world. The second is all about what comes out of your world. The first one's an inside job, and the second one is an outside job. Do not quench the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit wants to move. The Holy Spirit wants to, to use your life and your witness and your money and your time. And the Holy Spirit, don't, don't, don't restrict him. Because there's power that could flow. The kingdom, listen, the kingdom that you are now a part of, now a part of, is not a kingdom of words. It's a kingdom of power. But it can only powerfully work through those who don't quench the Holy Spirit. And just a heads up, have you noticed that God does not ever inquire of you if it's okay when he wants to use you? The last time I checked with God, God's not like, hey, I was thinking Tuesday, 3.30, what do you want? And I'm just going to like, I'm just, you're going to, let's just set this whole thing up. You're going to be at a Starbucks. You're going to see a barista. She's going to start crying. She's going to be discouraged. Here's the verse I want you to use. It'll be in your email. And I want you to, it just never works like that, does it? Everything that Jesus did was interrupted. He's like on his way to go heal this one guy's daughter and this woman with the issue of, he's like on his way to go to this one thing and this blind guy, he's, he's like just doing the YMCA at a wedding and his mom's like, they ran out of Merlot. <laughs> they ran out of Merlot. You know, your mother loves Merlot. He's like, I don't, I don't know if this is the right, Merlot? I thought you were pink. Anyways, um, <laughs> everything about God is interrupting your life. Yeah. And if you want to live on your agenda, you're going to restrict him. But if you want to live on his agenda, you're going to release him. That's why I think you should set an alarm in your phone and tomorrow when you wake up, just go, good morning, Holy Spirit. The beautiful third person of the Trinity. What do you want to do in me? And what do you want to do through me? If there's any character stuff that you're concerned about, just want to let you know you can talk to me about anything. You know, I think the problem for most of us is that there's still parts of your life that are off limits to God. God, you can talk to me about anything, but don't you dare bring up that one thing one issue. That's mine. So I'll let you, you know, we're looking at a pie chart. You got 75. That's pretty big, man. But that thing is mine. I'm not, do, I'm not, I'm not give, I'm not, do, ah. God's going to win. I don't know, I don't know if you've realized this yet, but God's going to win. His will is going to, his plans, and, and you know how he's going to win? He's going to win through kindness. It's not going to beat you by going, you want to fight me? You want to wrestle me? He's going to shower you with so much mercy and so much grace and so much faithfulness and so much love and so much hope that all of a sudden you're going to say you win again. It's character and power. God's power wants to flow through your life. Don't grieve him, but please, Zoe, don't quench him. Let it overflow out of your life. Watch the scripture. This is what Paul the apostle, he's trying to find language for it. Watch what he says in chapter 4, Ephesians, sorry, chapter 5. And do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing melodies in your heart to the Lord. You know what he's saying? He's saying, I want to do something so big inside of you that what bursts out of you is just like, I got to sing about it. It's just like, I got this melody and I just, I, I, I know it's kind of weird and Christians are weird so it's fine but like it's just out of the overflow I'm just in love with God how did a song get into my he put a new song in my mouth he put a new song in my heart 
I, I, when I was growing up in church, we used to sing this. this it's, a, it's a cheesy song. Please hear me. It's a che- I know it's cheesy, but I am cheesy, okay? But, I, but we used to sing this song. I got a river of life flowing out of me. Makes the lame to walk and the blind to see. Opens prison doors, set the captives free. I got a river of life flowing out of me. Spring up, oh well. Look at all the church people. And the end of that line would be splish splash. It's like, you know, I'm like in church being like, splish splash. Like I was loving that part. You know you mad churchy when you splish splash and then fine with it. I got a river of life flowing out of me. It makes the lame to walk and the blind to see. I got a river of life flowing out of me. Spring up. Oh, well. God is not just going, it's only about you, your character, your malice, your anger, your greed, your lying. That's all I care about. No, he wants to deal with you and use you. It's not just character, it's power. The power of God is not limited to 60 minutes in a service on a Sunday. It's not limited to a YouTube channel. It's not limited to a podcast. The power of God wants to move in our homes. All of a sudden, you're like, I'm singing hymns and I'm singing songs and I'm praising God. And all of a sudden, I'm I'm blessing people and helping people and serving people and praying with people. All of that happened. Why? Because someone told you? No, because the Holy Spirit's like, come on, let's pray for him. Come on, let's send him a Venmo. Come on, let's, 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 let's bless him. I was talking to this guy on the, on the phone this last week. This is amazing. And this guy, I got on the phone with him, and, and we started to catch up. And he said, Pastor Chad, I got to tell you this story. He said, when I was a senior in college at UCLA, I was going to the Bancroft location. Before COVID, Zoe had three locations. One of them was Bancroft. He said, I used to bring carfuls of people from UCLA with me. And it was Heart for the House 2019. And I really felt the Holy Spirit talk to me and gave me a number to give. I guess so Heart for the House Sunday, I came with a car full of people from UCLA. And when it came time to give, I obeyed the Holy Spirit. So we get in the car on the way back and all my other classmates, they start asking like, did you give? Did you give? Everybody in the car gave. And then one of the friends said, How much did you give? Let's never do that to each other, okay, guys? They're all telling the amount. This this guy felt kind of awkward because the Holy Spirit gave him a number, $2,000. So when it came time for him, he's like, I gave $2,000. All of his friends were like, dang, we didn't know you balling like that, dog. He's like, nah. I only had $2,500 in my account, but I knew that God talked to me about giving. He said, Pastor Chad, when I graduated from UCLA, God gave me an idea to start an online course, and this is what I taught. And it did so well in the first year, I sold over $500,000 worth of online class. I said, dang. He said, after the first year, it did so good. The next year, we did five million. I said, hot, did you give at the heart for the house again? (laughs) Jesus is Lord. He said, didn't stop there. He said, that five million this year, if we close the books, we're going to close it. It looks like off of our projections, we're going to end at $15 million. I said, man, praise God. He said, but Pastor Chad, I know that if I was not obedient to what God told me in that heart for the house to give that $2,000, I really believe with all my heart that I never would have stepped into the 500,000, into the 5 million or the 15 million. Hear me today, loved one. I'm not saying that if you give to God, you're gonna get millions. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is obey the power of the Holy Spirit. Obey the prompting, obey the leading. Let's start living spirit-filled, but let's start living spirit-led. Don't block God, stop blocking God. So God, he doesn't wanna be restricted. He wants to be released. to grieve him my dad's sitting there like you feel this way about your aunt but no I don't I love her some of you today are like I love you Jesus but I just some of you know God's been talking to you like I want to use you I want to use that space I want to use that gift 
going to use that story that you got. Oh, God, I don't know. I'm busy. I, I got too much in this season. I, I, I'm, I'm tired. I'm, I'm maxed. You're not too maxed for God. Don't you believe the lie of the world and the lie of culture that you're too busy to be used by God? God's got just enough margin. He's got just enough grace. He's got just enough power to use somebody like you. Did you block him? Did you? Did you block God? Did you block God? I don't think you did it on purpose. But I hear the Holy Spirit saying, I want to be released. At Zoe Church, I want to be released. I'm not going to build a church that you come on a Sunday and drink from a fire hose and go and try and take it all till the next Sunday. Tomorrow, I'm going to fill you up again. And Tuesday, I'm going to fill you up again. And Wednesday, I'm going to keep on speaking and keep on loving and keep on helping and keep on showering you with my grace. Come on, stand to your feet today. Jesus, we love you today with all of our heart. We thank you, Spirit of the living God, 